Have you ever wondered, what is my purpose as a follower of Jesus? Why do I even exist? What is my calling in life? Or why did God make me an image bearer of God? By the end of this teaching, you'll know what the Bible actually says about our purpose as image bearers of God. And you'll know exactly what you're supposed to do as a follower of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 10 31, it says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. This seems to be the central focus of our existence as image bearers of God. Human beings exist for the glory of God. We exist to be satisfied by God, to know God, and to glorify Him by delighting in Him and walking in His ways. In fact, Colossians 1.16 says that all things exist for God, for His Son Jesus. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says we can do all things for the glory of God. And so we exist to image God on the earth. We exist to behold his image, to grow in his image, and to reflect his image in the earth by multiplying his image through other people. We are called to be fruitful and multiply. So our purpose is to know our Father and to make him known. We exist to be faithful image bearers of God on the earth. And Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 gives us the original mandate for humanity. God tells Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. And so that is the original mandate on humanity to be fruitful, to expand, and to multiply the image of God in the earth. In Genesis 2, God takes Adam, puts him in the garden to keep the garden, to work the garden, and to cultivate the garden that God entrusted to his care. So from the very beginning, the purpose for humanity has been to be fruitful and multiply his image across the earth through procreation and through representing God well. The purpose for humanity is to rule and govern the earth under God's authority. And the purpose of humanity is to cultivate and expand the world he's entrusted to mankind. And by being fruitful and multiplying and ruling and governing and cultivating under the authority of God and to the glory of God, we're glorifying God in our ruling and fruitful multiplication as image bearers of God. So here's what we need to do is, We need to establish the fact that that is the general purpose and calling for all people. In other words, we all exist for the same general reason and purpose, to glorify God, to image him, to be fruitful and multiply. But every person is going to do this one main thing a little differently. We all have different roles to play in the body. We all have a different individual way in which we're going to do these things. We have different gifts. We have different levels of education, different levels of spiritual maturity, different knowledge, different backgrounds, different upbringing, different experiences, different occupations and careers. We live in different places on the earth and we have different cultural contexts. So in other words, we are all going to do the same thing, but in different ways with different gifts and all the different, I guess, facets to the human experience. So John chapter 6 actually speaks of what this will look like. John 6, 29 says, this is the work of God that you believe in the Son of Man. So to trust in Jesus, to believe in the Messiah, to receive what he's done and rest in Christ is to be fit for use. That is the first step to fulfilling your calling and God's purpose for your life. We cannot effectively be fruitful and multiply. We cannot rule and govern what God has placed in in our responsibility. We cannot cultivate and expand under God's authority and glorify Him unless we first do the one thing that makes us children of God, which is to trust in Jesus. That is the true work of God. In fact, John 15, 4 through 8 sums it up very nicely. We as disciples of Jesus are called to abide in Christ and he takes care of everything else. We're to abide and he will produce good fruit in our lives. That is the call for disciples is to remain, to stay close, to continue, to remain steadfast in Jesus and abide in him daily. And through our abiding, God will take care of everything else. In fact, Matthew 6, 33 says it this way. We are to seek first the kingdom of God and everything else God will take care of. In other words, prioritize the kingdom of God, not just above all things, but in all things. Our purpose and our calling is more about our heart, more than it is about our setting and our environment. Your occupation, your career is not your calling. Your purpose is not your career, is not your job. These things fit into our calling, but... 
our purpose on the earth is the accumulation of all the moments we dedicate to God and we glorify Him by being faithful to Him. That is our purpose. It is not one specific experience. It is not one specific moment. It is not one specific achievement or, or place that you reach in your life. It is the accumulation of all the moments throughout your life you chose to be faithful to God. And when we're faithful to God, when we behold God, when we grow in His image, we will reflect His image, and other people will have the image of Jesus multiplied in them. It's like how fruit multiplies through seed. The way that Jesus multiplies His image across the earth is through His disciples that bear fruit, and then the fruit of of the Spirit will plant seeds in the hearts and lives of other people. And then as that happens, good fruit will be produced in their life and the fruit of the gospel will be produced. In other words, we are the fruit of Jesus' labor. And Jesus multiplies his work, his kingdom, his seed across the planet through his people. Matthew twenty two thirty seven says that the sum of the prophets and the law is to love God and love people. And so the way that we image God well and reflect His image and multiply His image, the way that we cultivate and rule and govern what God has entrusted to us is by loving God and loving people in all things and in all moments. That is the primary calling on our lives as believers is to love God, worship Him, honor Him, glorify Him by loving people. That is the most practical way to love God is by loving the people in front of you. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says the end of all things is to fear God and keep his commandments. So you can boil down the purpose and the calling of humanity down to very simply love God and love people. And that will look like fearing God and keeping his commandments. That will look like abiding and bearing fruit. That will look like seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things are taken care of. In other words, we exist very simply to be reflections of God in the earth. And that a lo- there's a lot of different components that play into that. But if we just prioritize his kingdom, glorify him in all things, do all things to the glory of God, love God and love people, we are fulfilling our calling. If every day you choose to seek God in his word and seek God in prayer, behold the face of God in order to reflect him well, you will see that every day you're living with purpose. That is what your purpose and calling is really all about. If you want the scriptures and the notes for this teaching, you can find those in the full free course for new believers on our website under session 32, What is My Purpose? Be sure to review the scriptures and the notes before the next session. Visit our website, share this with someone, and I will see you in the next video where we address the question, What is Temptation?